<laughs> I believe what he said when he said it's already done. He said, I believe what he said when he said it. Same song. It's already done. Oh, yeah. I believe what he said when he said it's already done. It's done today. It's done, I say. I believe that it's already done. His promises, his word I read. I believe that it's already done. Let's declare one more time. Oh, oh it's done today. It's done, I say. I believe it's already done. Oh, his word, his promises, and his word I read. I believe it's already done. And so again, I say, I believe what he said when he said it. Let me say it one more time. I believe what he said when he said it. I believe what he said when he said it. It's already done. Just believe that it's already done. Hallelujah. We're going to go straight away into the word of the Lord. We have communion on today. We just thank God again for each of you being here in our e-church again. Thank you for joining us. I want you to get Daniel 2, and we're going to look at the 19th verse. Man. Daniel chapter 2 and the 19th verse. God's been dealing with me in a different way lately, and... Uh, might be a little unorthodox this morning, and it won't be long, actually. I know it won't be long. Daniel 2, verse 19. NLT says, that night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. He said, praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. <clears throat> he controls, this is the key, he controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. I want to bring your attention to the 21st verse. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. If you notice, the Bible gives us clear indication that God is dealing with Daniel in the night time. It's a night vision. But if you read before that, you'll see that Daniel had been praying all that day. So he was praying during the day, and then in the night, God began to speak to him, gave him a night vision. And after he received the revelation from the Lord, Daniel began to praise God for that revelation. And he began to declare, praise be the God of heaven. Because he's got all wisdom, he's got all power, and it all belongs to him. But he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars, those who seek him, those who seek out his knowledge and his wisdom. Amen? And then he goes on to say that he controls the course of world events. Do we not have some world events taking place even in our time? Reminder from Daniel, he controls the world events. He removes kings and he sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. I want to talk about a little something different today. I want to talk about COVID-19. I want to talk about COVID-19. COVID-19 hit the United States uh, officially. The official date that it hit the United States is January 13th. 2020, all right? I believe that was that case in Washington. COVID-19 is the deadliest pandemic in U.S. history. 
Let me say that again. COVID-19 is the deadliest pandemic in U.S. history. It was the third leading cause of death in the United States last year behind heart disease and cancer. The U.S. life expectancy dropped by three years for Hispanic Americans, 2.9 years for African Americans, and 1.2 years for white Americans from 2019 to 2020. And all this is for a reason. All of this is for a reason. All of this is for a reason. Everything I just read to you, it is for a reason. We cannot mishandle the shift that is taking place. There is a shift that has already begun, and it is still open. There's still a portal open, and we cannot mishandle the shift. I want to say uh, something just to remind you. Last year, all of April and all of May last year, we were not in church. For the entire month of April and the entire month of May last year, we were not in church. And there were some things that happened. Habits were formed. Got very quiet. Folks who were barely holding on, let go. Let go all the way. And before COVID-19 hit the U.S., we were a very busy church. Fellowshipping with other churches, we would get on the bus and we would ride and support our leaders or anyone that was speaking um, to go and show support and fellowship. We did this a lot, especially in the the last half of 2019, we were on the move. We even took our, our trip to Pigeon Forge in 2019 as a church family. And those were things that we were doing, and we were very busy, and we were very on the go. And then in 2020, this COVID-19, some people call it the invisible enemy, um, comes and hits the United States and slows everything down. As a matter of fact, for our church, all of April and all of May, we did not meet at all. And there are some places that are just now coming back to worship. Even though the edict had gone forth from local government, from state government in different states saying that you can now meet again, there were some people who was like, no, nope, not going to do it. We're going to be saved because they're not going to blame us if they get it. And so people did not meet, and people are just now gathering back together. And, and where are you going with this, Elder Claude? Where I'm going with this is I want to show you different shifts that have taken place. And for us, at April and May last year was very crucial. Okay, it was needed. Yes, it was needed for us to protect ourselves from this virus, to learn more as we protected ourselves, to learn more about it, learn how it spread. Um, some of us got it during the, those, eight, those two months, the April and May, of us not being here and we were trying to figure out where it came from and the origin and you know just what was going on what was happening what was this going to do um, when were we coming back and we came together as a church and decided once the government said hey you all can meet again we're going to meet first Sunday in June and we came back but a lot of people did not come back and that's okay but there were some people who said I don't think that we were we heard all we were supposed to hear uh, from leadership. I don't think the church did all they were supposed to do uh, uh, to educate us. Okay, we're talking about adults now. The church, we, yes, the church is the hospital, but we are not the literal hospital. We are not the CDC, but we are the kingdom. Somebody got it. We, we are not the CDC. We are not the literal hospital. We are the kingdom. Of God, we are God's representation of the kingdom in the earth. All right, <clears throat> and there were a lot of people who felt some kind of way concerning COVID nineteen. And the crazy thing, what's up, Jax? I told you you're gonna help me preach today. Oh, uh, he thought I was waving at him when I did like that. Uh, but what what really is the issue here is people not recognizing when when things like famine and and, and disease hit the land what we are supposed to do as saints. People are, are missing the point, yet habits formed and people got lazy 
and people were lax in giving, people were lax in tithing. I'm telling you, they always say this, and this applies to everyone, every corporation. If you really want to find out who's rocking with you, go through something. If you, if you really want to know who's, who's with you, you know, it, it, the, the internet is good for memes, right? There's a meme that said, no, know the difference between who's in, in your corner and your circle. There's, there's a difference. Who's it? And in your face. Huh? There's, there's so many memes that, that I could use and recite this morning to help you realize my point, help you understand what I'm trying to get to you. If you want to know who's really with you, go through something. Go through something and see who's still with you, who's still going to be there for you, who's still going to uplift you, encourage you, who's still going to say, we can make it, we can get through this. Go through something. And so listen, the beginning of a thing like a pandemic doesn't always feel like the beginning of it. It doesn't always feel like the full-on pandemic in the beginning. I want you to go back to last year and really think about this as I, as I get ready to set this thing up for you and land this plane. The beginning of a famine in the Bible, the beginning of the, this pandemic and now epidemic for us in the United States, it didn't feel like anything in the beginning because cases were so isolated. There was, there was one here, maybe three here. But then as time went on, as time went on, if you didn't get the virus, you were still affected. Maybe your job said, don't come. Now you're working from home. Maybe there were certain essential things that you were able to get like that. You now go to the store and they are off the shelves. And you have to wait and you have to find other means to get them. I mean, things like toilet paper, tissue paper, like things like... Uh, uh, um, uh, Lysol spray and you know disinfectants and things like that that was high commodity if you could get your hands on a, a, a toilet paper and get your hands on some Lysol spray I mean you was like the Don you was you I mean last year and then look you you could have turned that into a business if you had a stockpile on some of that stuff early and then people needed you could have you could have flipped it you could have so listen that those were those were natural shifts natural shifts there were things that you needed at certain times you could not readily get and now you had to go seek them out and depending on the time you showed up you might have missed the shipment it was crazy i knew i knew when kroger and when Walgreens and Walmart, I knew when they got new things in. Before the pandemic, I didn't care when the, the truck came. And when I just knew that when I showed up, it was going to be there. But in this time of pandemic, I, I had to find out, okay, so when does the new stuff come in? Well, Mr. Harris, it's going to come Thursday. It usually comes about 9 a.m. There's a line of cars out here. Things change, and, and because there were natural shifts, you know shifts had already begun in the spirit first, okay? Because whatever happens on earth, it's been declared in the eternal already. How many kingdom people am I talking to this morning? And so you realize that we live in an upside-down kingdom, and so because we live in an upside-down kingdom, in times of pandemic, in times of epidemic, of famine, and, uh, curses, diseases, sicknesses, and things like that. Those are the times when the Lord shows us his miracles. Those are the times when God really blesses his people. I know it sounds oxymoronic right now coming out of my mouth, but if you are in the kingdom, this is not, this is not unfamiliar to you. This sounds like home to you. When, when things hit the earth that really rock and shake the earth because we are in the earth and not of the earth, then we experience miracles and blessings. Are we affected? Yes, it's collateral damage. So we're going we're gonna to be affected physically of some things, but also we will experience exponential growth, exponential ideas and creativity during this time. 
It's a shift. Don't miss the shift. Don't miss the shift. I want to just reiterate again, the beginning of pandemics don't feel like the pandemic until time goes by and then you are affected in many ways by the pandemic. Many ways. Just think about all the stuff that we that we just we looked at that happened last year. Gas, you know, we had we, people people just run into the gas station like crazy um, because a pipeline and you know, and a lot of times those those news the news that breaks it causes us to react and go get the gas and I, we made the gas scarce. We did. We made it scarce by hurrying to get gas. And I mean, there were people putting it in bags. I didn't understand that. <laughs> putting it in bags and, you know, just doing all they could. They did it with toilet paper. I was just like, really? It was just crazy how we react, how people react to things. And really, there's a shifting taking place. I want to bring your attention to um, the book of Samuel no particular chapter. I just want to talk about, um, in Samuel, you'll read that in David's reign, there was a three-year famine. In, David, in King David's reign, there was a three-year famine. And the thing I want to tell you is that uh, pandemics, epidemics, definitely mean change for the saints. That's the point I want to drive home this morning. Pandemics and epidemics mean change for the saints. They mean change for the saints. Type that in the comments, E Church. Pandemics, epidemics mean change for the saints. In that time of famine, a low time, David was still honored and considered Israel's greatest king in the time of famine. And he was able to, he was able to make things right with the Gibeonites during that famine. Because Saul had done something crazy. Because Saul had been uh, unintegral. Because Saul had been without character. It was affecting the now reign of King David. But God had someone like King David in the seat during the time of pandemic, during the time of epidemic. And he still heard from the Lord and said, I see a miracle instead of a mess, I see miracle. And he used integrity to make things right with the Gibeonites. And things begin to shift and change. Pandemics and epidemics are signs of change for the saints. It took famine to drive Abraham to Egypt. Isaac to the land of the Philistines. Jacob and his entire family to Egypt. The book of Ruth, if you look at Ruth, it opens with a famine that forces her, it forces Naomi, the mother-in-law of Ruth, and her family to travel. They move to and then away from Moab. The story of Ruth depends on the initial famine. And it ends with Ruth being the ancestor of King David. Neither the Exodus or the King David, the, 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 these are major characters. None of them would exist without the famine. God just sat me down this week. I had so many different ideas and ways I was going to go today and then yesterday. I just, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to dig deeper into this one. If not for the, listen, Tuesday, we gathered at South. We gathered at South Tuesday and we prayed and I thank God for Elder Danielle having a heart to, to use her Tuesday night for prayer. Something, once again, you got to hear me this morning because I don't have a lot of time. We got to do communion. I have a lot of time to explain a lot of different things, but once again, she heard a shift, a shift. We ha it had been so long since we had sitting at his feet prayer. And that was because we wanted to keep the saints safe. And we normally did it here, a smaller room. But we just said, okay, you know what? 
We normally did it on Saturdays. We'll do this thing on a Tuesday night. We'll have it at South where there's more room and people can spread out. And I thank God. God talked to me on Tuesday and said, and some of you may remember, that this is a time for family business. This is, and listen, the Lord told me to remind you this morning that the portal for family business is still open. The thing about it is we are still in the midst now of an epidemic. And, and Pastor Regina so eloquently explained the difference between pandemic and epidemic. Pandemic is global. That means it's happening everywhere in the world at the same time. Well, guess what? Some of these places that we have over time felt like we need to help and all that. Well, look, they got their stuff together now. They have it contained because they did right on the onset. In the beginning of things, they took the proper precautions to keep. Listen, I saw a video one time. I want to say it was, uh, what's that place near Australia? New Zealand. There was a man who he called himself getting ready to go uh, surf. He had a surfboard, and there were supposed to be no people on the beaches there in New Zealand. And I saw that man take a few steps, and then I saw somebody at him with like a club. They was get off of the boat, and I mean like they. Just, I was like, whoa! And if you're looking, you know, outside looking in, you know, just just kind of watching that with no context, you're like, man, that dude just trying to surf. What's but the, the guy was doing, the officer was doing his job. Nobody's supposed to be out here. And see, we don't operate like that. We the land of the free. We the home of the brave. And so, yeah, you know, we have rights. We have, you're not going to make me wear a mask. You're not going to make me do this. You're not going to make me take the shot. You're not going to, you know, we have so many rights and so many things. And what it all amounts to is division. It all amounts to, because then you got vaccinated versus unvaccinated. You got the mask wearers versus the non-mask wearers. You got people who thinking this is all a government hoax and it's all this and all that. No, it's very real. I had it. I had it. It almost took me out and I thank God I'm here. Listen. It's global as a pandemic, but now it's an epidemic. It's just happening here. We're the, we're the crazy ones. We're, it's only happening in certain little spots, and it's big time here. Cases are surging. Variants are just being discovered, it seems like, every other day. We done went through the whole alphabet now, the Greek, Greek Delta, Lambda, Zeta, <laughs> AKA variant. It's a de it's, oh, Jesus. It's, oh. Oh, pretty soon we're going we to have Omega variant. <laughs> you know, we done went through all of that here because we would not ready ourselves. Listen, if you look in the Bible, during famines, that's, that's what we have to compare this pandemic to. During famines, you know, where food, everything was scarce because of disease in the land, because of curses and plagues. So famine was imminent. Well, during that time and before, God talked to his people and God readied his people. And if you be honest, we had Pastor Regina, Davion, different people were speaking and they were readying us for the 2020 year and, and beyond. They were readying us. But you have to you have to come in here with a heart to receive and and to hear what the Lord is saying. Let me hurry up. But you got to understand that all those moves uh, the pandemic and, and epidemics, they, they, they are for change. Yes. They are for change. Once again, let me remind you, the famine drove Abraham. God used that. Drive Abraham to Egypt. Isaac to the land of the Philistines. Jacob, his entire family, to Egypt. And if you look at Ruth, the book opens with a famine. Her and Naomi, they move, uh, move to and away from Moab. But you don't get, you don't get King David nor the exodus uh, without the famine, yeah. without the famine. And so this past Tuesday was just so amazing. And I want to remind you that portal is open. The portal is open for family business. God told me to tell you that during this time, because we're still, we're still in an epidemic, but what God wants to remind you is that we are in an upside down kingdom. So it's upside down because other people see that we're we they're saying we should be struggling we should we should not be flourishing 
we should not have new creativity and new ideas and we should not have inside and we should not be starting businesses and then they should not do well. But because we're in an upside down kingdom, then God says everything that the society and that the world systems are saying you cannot do, I want to do it through you in this time. And if you will receive that and move, there are some things that the Lord has shown you and given to you by way of dreams and by way of vision that you have sat on for years. God said, now is the time. Yes, it seems like unorthodox time. It seems like backwards, but listen, it's an upside down kingdom. And God says, what I want to do with you is I want to make you a miracle for my glory. God says, I want to make your family a miracle for my glory. That idea Get back into the woodshed, as they say, and flesh it out. Flesh out the idea with the Holy Ghost. With the, Listen, listen, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. You ever heard of insider trading? The Holy Ghost was that before there was inside trading, before there were any espionage and all that, because the Holy Ghost hovers, because he's God's spirit in the earth. And because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, there is nothing that is hidden. There is no meeting that you're outside of that the Holy Ghost doesn't know about. There is no boardroom meeting that you were not invited to that the Holy Ghost still won't give you insight and information and make you privy to. If you have the Holy Ghost you have the edge if you have the Holy Ghost you have the edge I want to say it again if you have the Holy Ghost you have the edge now is the time to move the Lord the Lord said there's a shifting taking place uh, there were some people that were not bored and lazy uh, back in April and May last year. We were, there were some people just could not wait to get back into the house of the Lord. And there are things that we are slowly doing. I just want to say this, that on Friday night in the nest, leaders of performing arts, audio, video, music department, youth department, we gathered together with some of the people in our respective departments and we sat in there and we watched Bishop Jake's music and arts team just kind of give us some insight on how they do things. But that Friday night felt so good. Kind of felt like 8th Avenue. Felt like when we would come in and we would watch a movie or something that, that was just to inspire us. It just felt good. Anybody that was there know what I'm talking about? And so, listen, we, we are not being affected. We're not going to allow this thing. It's been long enough. Somebody say long enough. It's been long enough. It's been long enough. And now I'm really going to hear God because I see the opportunity. I see the portal is open for me to make some moves, for me to, listen, the, the famine. Let me write, remind you one more time before I let this thing go because time is moving quick. Famine caused people to move. What is it that God wants to move you into? Famine caused people to move, and because they were obedient, because they were obedient to the shifting of the Lord, there were other things that happened, trickled down. Listen, the enemy always wants to try and mess with the seed. Always wants to mess with the seed. All, listen, if, if somebody got to hear me. Someone that, that has a small child or someone that has a child on the way, you hear me good. The enemy wants to try and keep generational curses passing on from you to your little ones, but make a decision today that, listen, I've got to be the protector of this little generator, this child, and the one on the way, the, the one here, the ones that are still living under my, you've got to make a decision that now, listen, it's not just about me, it's about them. I've got to make sure that when I leave, when God calls me home, that what I have produced in the earth will continue on in the ways of the Lord and in the kingdom. It sounds cliche, but it's the time now. That is family business. Family business. Somebody shout that out. Family business. Put that in the comments. Family business. In times of famine, those families move. God came to that person that was head of the household and said, look, it's time to move. We've got to move. 
We've got to move. We've got to move. We've got to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. We speak coverage. We speak covering now over her and her children. We speak covering now in the name of Jesus. We speak covering. Know too much about him. Know too much about him. You know too much about him. You've seen God do too much. Know too much. Know too much. Know too much. Listen, this... Mm, I wish I had more time. Wish I had more time, but we've got to get back. The, the shift is is a reminding shift that God has always been with us, and that He's never left us, and that He wants us to move in this time of famine. There's still some things we can't readily get. There, have you noticed that the shelves are emptying, but prices are going up? There's still some. There's still some things being affected by this thing. And there's still some restrictions that are at bay that may come into place, but we still win. We still win. We are healed. Those of us who went through this virus and had this thing, we will recover all and then some. There are still some things the enemy's trying to do on the inside of my body, but I am healed. And not only am I healed, I am whole. Anybody want to declare that for themselves? Not only am I healed, but I am whole. And I thank God for breathing on my family business. I thank God. Listen, if you're going to start a company or a corporation, or if you are just going to perpetuate God's plan in the earth through your seed, all of that is family business. And we thank God for breathing on our family business. One thing that happened, I'm getting ready to transition to communion. One thing that happened in this time, there was a lot of people just trying to be convenient. There were a lot of churches trying to be convenient. There were a lot of seeker-friendly going on. And we, listen, that's not what we were built on, New Life. Come on, be honest, New Life. That's not what we were built on, and that's not how we're going to move. That's not how we operate. We're going to always operate in love. We're going to always operate in love. Hear me good before you want to repeat me in a different way. We're going to always operate in love. But listen, there's some things we just have to hold on to. And I don't care what the cancel culture says. Um, it's not being mean. It's being right. It's called being in right standing with the Lord. I've never seen so many people that want to have babies out of, out of wedlock, and they want to celebrate it. They want to celebrate it by having photo shoots. No, no, let's, I mean, do what you want to do. But if you, if you know better, if you grew up in Zion and something like that happens, because understand, mistakes happen, they, they happen. But I, I'm not going to glorify. We don't glorify. Yeah.